The next menu is your network menu. Under the network menu, you have your LAN, your email, and your DDNS. Your first is your LAN. Okay, out of the box, eCore, the network type will be set up as a DHCP. The DHCP, as long as there's a network cable connected to the eCore, the DHCP will automatically gather the IP, the subnet, the gateway, and the DNS server information for you. Okay, once the DVR or the DHCP gathers that information for you, always come back to the network type and switch it to static IP. It will automatically take that information and input it for you in here. It's always you always make the note to always change it from DHCP to static IP because what can happen is on a power loss, once a DVR repowers itself and reboots, it is possible that the DVR can grab another IP address. Now, if the DVR does grab another IP address, that will cause conflicting issues between the DVR IP and the router IP, okay, if you're setting it up for remote viewing. If those two IPs, the local area network IPs, do not match up and sync in the DVR and the router, you will no longer be able to view the DVR from the outside world. So always use the DHCP only as a tool, and always make sure to change your network type back to a static IP. Okay, underneath there you have your bandwidth limit. You can toggle between the bandwidth limit. And then you have your two ports, your HTTP port and your control port. In some locations, the HTTP port 80 is commonly blocked, so you can come here to this screen and change it to 8100 or any other port desired. And then you have your control port down here below, 1600. If 1600 is blocked by you, again, you can simply come here to this screen and change it to anything you'd like. Okay, and always remember that these are the two ports that you're going to be opening up in your router along with the local area IP address. Now, under your email, if you do choose to have any email notifications sent to you, whether it be a fan failure, a hard drive failure, a motion, or a video loss, you'd come to your network screen to your email menu, and this is where you would set up your information here. You have your SMTP server, okay? Then your SMTP port. Again, this is something that you would gather from your, the, um, your particular internet provider at the site. Again, if you're just a regular simple end user, they can do a search of, for instance, gmail.com. They can go and click on it and they can find their SMTP server and their SMTP port if necessary. Okay, if there is any authentication needed, you would enable that. Okay, and then underneath there, you would put in your username and password below. If there is none needed, you would put no authentication needed, and your username and password is now grayed out. You would not have to worry about putting a username and password in there. Okay, below you would put your, your sender email in, and then you have up to three receiver emails, and then you have your email subject. Your email subject is the subject line that will appear when receiving these emails. Once you open the email, it will specify which particular event it sent you the email for. So if I did receive an email, I would see eCore alert on the subject line, and then I would open up the email and it would tell me video loss camera one, hard drive failure, maybe a fan failure, or a motion camera two. Okay, so once opening up the email, it will tell you the specific reason why it sent you that email. Next, you have your DDNS. Okay, under the DDNS, it's a free service, again, provided by Everfocus. Simply to set up your DD, DDNS service, you would go to everfocusddns.com, and that's a name availability website. You would simply put in that, put in the, uh, the everfocusddns.com, put in the name that you are looking to use, and it's going to tell you that it's as long as it's available, you would come back to the screen, you would type in the DVR name. Okay, let's just use EJ Office as an example. And you would hit the submit. Now once hitting the submit, it's going to either tell you success or fail message. Okay, it tells you set DDNS setting is successful. You click the OK button and you're good. If you do receive this fail message, nine times out of ten, it is because the DNS server is not set correctly. So if you do receive the, fa the fail message, just go back and make sure that your DNS server is set correctly. 
Okay. Now, by setting up the DDNS, what that enables you to do is no longer worry about getting a static IP or having a charge for a static IP. The DDNS does take care of using a dynamic IP, so instead of worrying about your IP changing and constantly trying to find out your wide area network IP to plug in, you would simply use your ejoffice.everfocus.com and type that in every time you would like to view the DVR. Now, if the dynamic IP changes on you, it automatically links it to the DVR name, and again, you, the customer, would never have to worry about the final.